What a year 2021 has been for Major League Baseball. We've seen history written in more ways than one. But the funny thing about this season is who ended up leading the league in home runs and RBIs. Because of how crazy this season has been, Salvador Perez will likely not win the AL MVP award, but that doesn't mean we should ignore what he accomplished. So I want to provide a quick overview of Perez's accomplishments. In 10 seasons, Perez has won a ring, he's a World Series MVP, 7-time All-Star, 5-time Gold Glover, and 3-time Silver Slugger. Keep in mind, Perez missed the entire 2019 season after undergoing going Tommy John surgery, so that's one year of his prime that he can never get back. Regardless, this is quite the resume for someone who has only played in 10 seasons, especially for a catcher. However, let's take a look at some career stats. Perez's career OPS Plus and WRC Plus numbers are only slightly above league average. To be fair, a catcher isn't normally an offensive force in a lineup, and the average catcher's OPS Plus and WRC Plus is under 100. Nonetheless, if a catcher is the right combination of hitter and fielder, they are usually at all-star level. Considering that Perez has played many seasons with an OPS Plus and a WRC plus under 100, this must mean he is a great defender. After all, he does have more gold gloves than silver sluggers. But this answer is a bit complicated. Take a look at Perez's career war from baseball reference and fan graphs. The difference is massive. If you didn't know this was Perez and had to guess player A and player B based off just the war numbers and how long they've been in the league, you'd think these two were completely different players. Baseball Reference paints a guy who has probably had their fair share of all-star appearances but has never been a superstar. Fangraphs paints a player who's probably been on two or three different teams to fill a role, and nothing more. How could these numbers be so drastically different? Well, it comes down to one thing, pitch framing. Something that only fan graphs takes into account when calculating war for catchers. Well, in the years where Perez won his Gold Glove awards, Perez produced negative framing runs, meaning his poor framing caused his team to concede more runs. His worst framing season came in 2016, the year he won his fourth straight Gold Glove award. In fact, Perez became the first AL catcher since Ivan Rodriguez to win four straight Gold Glove awards. Rodriguez Rodriguez is not only a Hall of Famer and former MVP, he's considered one of the best defensive catchers of all time. So yes, Perez made history in 2016, but how? Well, the framing may have been poor, but Perez was a master at throwing out base stealers. He led the league with a caught stealing percentage of 48%, and he had the seventh quickest pop-up time when throwing to second base. He was also among the best in preventing passed balls and wild pitches. The catcher position is one of the most important positions in baseball. Combine this with the fact that catcher is the most difficult position to fully quantify into stats, you see why catchers are so scrutinized. This leads to Perez's 2021 season, his best yet oddest season to date. On one hand, his framing was on par with his 2016 season, but then there's the hitting. On face value, this is one of the best seasons ever for a catcher as he broke the record for most home runs in a season by a catcher. He also led the league in RBIs on a 74-win team that had one of the worst on-base percentages in the league. But what makes this season even more bizarre is how it seemingly came out of nowhere in more ways than one. Perez has never really been one to draw a walk. However, for most of his career, he's never struck out much either. In modern baseball, we've seen the increase of the three true outcome hitter, the player who walks a lot, strikes out a lot, and hits a bunch of home runs. Perez has seemingly ignored this trend by going strictly for contact. Between 2011 and 2021, among players who have had at least 3,500 plate appearances during this time span, Perez has 
has the worst walk rate of all of these players, but his strikeout rate is better than league average. Also within this span, 49 players, including Perez, have an average zone contact percentage of at least 89.9%. However, of these 49 players, only six of them, including Perez, have a zone swing percentage of at least 70%. What this shows is most of the players with high zone contact rates are taking a more patient approach, which Perez certainly isn't doing. After missing the entire 2019 season, Perez came into the 2020 season with a new approach. His zone swing percentage shot up, while outside swing and overall swing percentages stayed normal. This new approach caused Perez's outside contact percentage to plummet. All of this is to say, despite having one of the worst walk rates in the league, Perez was swinging more, and it was working. In 2020, Perez was one of the league's best hitters, but there were several question marks due to the circumstances of the 2020 season and Perez's career-high BABIP rate. I mean, come on, his average was 333 with an on-base percentage of 353. That's a walk rate of less than 2%. This must mean that Perez's 2021 success is due to high BABIP as well, right? Well, no. In fact, his 2021 BABIP is on par with his career BABIP. But what did go up is barrel percentage, hard hit percentage, exit velocity, and interestingly, strikeout percentage. Within the past two seasons, Perez's strikeout rate has gone from league average to below average, while maintaining a similar terrible walk rate. In MLB history, only four players have ended a season with an on-base percentage under 320 and a slug percentage over 540, with over 300 plate appearances as well. Perez is one of them. Disregarding the 2020 season, this was Perez's most productive offensive season ever. In MLB history, on only nine different occasions has a player hit at least 48 home runs and 121 RBIs while striking out at least 170 times. Perez is one of them. So it's clear that Perez has changed his approach in some way. He's crushing the ball more than ever, and it doesn't seem to be due to luck or facing bad defenses. Well, let's take a look at his batting stance. Here's how Perez stood at the end of 2018. His feet were parallel to each other with a slight bend in his knees. However, fast forward to the start of the 2020 season, after missing the entire 2019 season, Perez altered his stance. His front foot now faced a bit outward. Then, at the beginning of the 2021 season, this stance widened a bit more. And by the end of the 2021 season, both of his feet were essentially parallel to each other, but facing away from home plate. This is something Perez worked on after his Tommy John procedure in March 2019. He worked with Royals special assignment hitting coach, Mike Tosar. According to Tosar, Perez would lean on his front side, which affected his balance and power. If Perez could tighten up his swing, he could do more damage. One of the drills they did together seemed to heavily influence Perez's batting stance today. In this drill, Perez would swing flat-footed with a widened stance and no leg kick. The purpose was to give Perez stability, allowing him to maintain power throughout his actual swing. With Perez having a reputation as a workhorse, he was able to see positive results in the 2020 season, with those results continuing in 2021. To really hammer down Perez's reputation as a hard worker, between 2013 and 2016, Perez not only won four straight gold gloves, he played the most innings behind the plate among all catchers. In 2021, Perez played in 161 games while playing 75% of those games as a catcher. In MLB history, only four players have played over 160 games, with 75% of their games at catcher. Perez is one of them. Before we move on, there's one more aspect to Perez's new stance. His leg kick. He now uses his legs more than ever to generate power. You hear Mike Matheny talk about, I definitely think he's getting into his legs more. That's your foundation, right? One at a time. 2018, 
I, don't, I ain't mad at that. 2021, you're seeing a conscious effort to get a little bit more. Considering how hard Perez was able to hit pitches in 2021, the slightly worsened put away rate and strikeout rate ended up only being a minor trade off for Perez's newfound success. And I have to say, this newfound success couldn't have happened to a better player. Perez will either retire as a Royal or at least will be known as a Royals legend. He's the heart of that team. Now, I have to admit, when Perez signed his extension prior to the 2021 season, I was unsure whether this was good value for the Royals, but there's some things you can't quantify into stats. This goes for some aspects of Perez's position, but also his role in the Royals organization. It's very important to note that Perez played the first half of his career with a very team-friendly contract. So team-friendly, it makes the Ozzy Albies contract look like an overpay. In 2012, Perez signed a five-year, $7 million extension with three team options that took the contract through the 2019 season. Then, after the 2015 season, the season where Perez was the World Series MVP, he received a five-year extension worth $52.5 million, essentially guaranteeing the team options of his old contract with an extra two years of guaranteed money. This was a gesture of good faith by the Royals organization, something that was repeated with the 2021 extension, which is fair considering how much Perez accomplished in those first two contracts. Speaking of what Perez has accomplished, let's think about something. Let's take away Perez's stats and position. If you see a player who just finished their 10th season and see the accolades Perez has, not including the silver slugger he's going to get for the 2021 season, it's fair to say this is a player on a Hall of Fame trajectory. But then you bring in the career stats and your opinion changes. Catcher is arguably the most difficult position to assess career-wise as catchers aren't historically as good as hitting as their teammates. So say Perez enters a few more All-Star games and wins another Silver Slugger or two. That's a trophy cabinet some Hall of Famers would dream of having. But you also have to take into account the poor framing, something that Fangraphs takes into account with their stats. This is a discussion for another day, as there's no way of knowing how much longer Perez will stay as a catcher, considering he's 31 years old. But I have to imagine he stays put for at least a few more years before turning into a DH. If he continues performing close to this level as a catcher in DH, Perez will have a very interesting case at the end of his career, considering how much he's already accomplished. But for now, let's remember that we've just witnessed a historic season that came out of nowhere. And we're just going to have to wait and see if Perez is still performing near this level whenever the Royals rebuild ends. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you did and subscribe for more content just like this. Thanks for watching.